Do you believe that there is a plot by globalists to take over the world? Now it is led into the lowest point, I think, for America uh, since Woodrow Wilson. This is the lowest uh, American uh, supremacy that we've been in 110 years. Now, I I've told you that uh, gold will hit an all-time high in 2024. It, it has. It's trading at all-time highs. I think that what was missing for silver are the rate cuts. We might even see silver trading at uh, 50 or above uh, before 2020. What's up, you guys? It's Ocean here. I'm back with Lior Gantz. Lior, great to have you back on the channel. Yeah, thanks. Very exciting. Lior, my first question is about Israel and relations with the United States. The Harris campaign said Trump will turn on Israel when it suits him. And Trump said on Thursday, if Kamala wins the White House, Israel will cease to exist. Which one of these U.S. presidential candidates are stronger for Israel? Uh, there's no doubt that the uh, Israelis that are educated about what's going on um, would love to see an Oval Office with uh, Donald Trump. There's not, not even a question about it. Do you see? Do you view both candidates as being? Um, somewhat for Israel, or is there? How does that play out when you break it down? Um, Kamala Harris is a um, is from a school of thought that is uh, above nationalism. They, she's a she's a true globalist, and that means that she hates the idea of Israel. The, the idea of Israel and the, and the actual um, country of Israel is the miraculous story of a minority, uh, uh, a minority religion in, in Judea 3,000 years ago gets sold to slavery by the Romans, uh, expelled to like uh, uh, 60 countries, lives in the diaspora for 2,000 years, almost gets wiped out in World War II, and comes back and builds a nation around the culture and religion and uh, the the story of a of a 3,300 year culture. It, it is the opposite, exact opposite, to what Kamala Harris was taught in in the uh, in, in in her formative years, where uh, the world. Is basically progressive, meaning that all ideologies of the past, nationalism, culture, America, all that is 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 uh, uh, is in the past, and the future is this uh, elite globalist environment where it's it's ruled by anointed individuals, which is what basically what what uh, she's uh, that's her school of thought. It's the same school that of, of, of uh, Barack Obama. So, to us, a person that is not delusional and has no fantasies, but has a clear plan, and it and his his messages make America great again, or, or put America first, which is exactly what uh, the country of Israel is built on, right? To to put uh, the Jewish people first in this environment that is a sovereign country it's not even a question of who understands uh, us better that's well put Lior. And, uh, and and if if kamal's campaign said that it's it's pure bullshit. by the way um i heard trump uh saying that it's it's obviously also campaign rhetoric um but actually the event that he said that was uh, funded by Miriam Edelson. She's the widower of Sheldon Edelson, who founded um, Las Vegas Sands, or, or the biggest uh, hotel chain and, and convention center uh, in Vegas and Macau and everything else. And he's uh, Donald Trump's number one donor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I did see Sands on his donor list. I was looking at the two donor lists recently, but 
you touched on something that's a very big idea, and that's Kamala Harris being a true globalist. I think that's that's a very big deal. And I'm a, I'm on the same page. And I think, you know, you could talk about now, you know, it, you see people talk about being woke, but what I'm going to talk about is being awake. And I think the biggest thing that determines if a person is awake or if they're asleep or a sheep is, I would ask this one question. Do you believe that there is a plot by globalists to take over the world? I, I would say that um, what we have um, it is an academic and elitist um, deep state, not in a in a in a conspiratorial uh, dark uh, type of uh, environment. It is it is literally uh, what they believe in. The what happened was once the Soviet Union fell in 1991 and the Berlin Wall fell there was such a euphoria in the world that the the narrative the school of thought was that there, there is no need anymore for wars because everybody will now want to be Americanized and democratized because that literally was what was happening at the time. East Germany and West Germany hugged it out. The, U the European Union started. This is a, a union between countries that have uh, killed each other for centuries, flame torched each other, spent four years in the ditches, just a, a century, uh, like, you know, 80 years before, killing each other for four years. And then almost, uh, you know, went to, to the end in World War II, and they are hugging it out. So the euphoria all over the world was immense. Uh, the book that encapsulates that era is the end of history. Um, and and if you haven't read it, if you haven't read it, you should because it shows you the mindset of the Clinton administration, the Obama administration, and uh, those same people are leading the Biden administration, Lincoln and Sullivan, and uh, uh, Lloyd Austin, uh, etc. So that mindset that we are done with national wars, with religious wars, with all that, and we can um, we can buy friends around the world. The United States has to sacrifice its middle class, its uh, you know its its its, uh, its wealth in order for everybody to be their friends, that mentality uh, backfired big, big. And now it has led into the lowest point, I think, for America uh, since Woodrow Wilson. This is the lowest uh, American uh, supremacy that we've been in 110 years. And I think that uh, when you have very low American supremacy, you have a lot of wars around the world. And you can see it uh, in this administration. This administration has seen more wars start than uh, any administration in, in uh, uh, I think, in, in the last hundred years. You have like 40 global conflicts right now. Nobody cares about Blinken and about Sullivan and about Biden and about Harris. They're, they're not respected anywhere, anywhere. They are only respected in the mind of a liberal who has been brainwashed to vote anything but Trump, because his mind has been brainwashed to do that. If he, if, if, but he's also brainwashed because he's just uneducated. That that it's the God honest truth. They 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 don't know how to answer simple questions. Look at all these protests that are going on. The the organizers of the protest tell the the protestees do not answer press questions because th they would look like fools. Um, so my point is that um, you really now are in a in a in a in a point where what what's happening in the United States is B 
because there's such a lack of education and appreciation, mo Americans are burning American flags. Americans are are uh, 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 disrespecting their own history, and and they're taking for granted America. The concept of America itself is is being put into question. Um, now I've seen some drastic uh, suggestions by Musk. Uh, for example, by Elon Musk, who, who says all these people should get a one-way ticket, live in a, an authoritarian country for a year, and then uh, come back and then uh, see if they like America or not. But I would say this is a this election is basically uh, 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 a line in the sand between Western decadence or Western supremacy. If the decadent people basically the uneducated and, and the brainwashed get to be the majority, then it is what it is. It's uh, Other countries will choose not to rely on the United States. The United States will continue to decline and just ruin everything that they have. On the flip side, if, if Americans choose supremacy, I think that they will get um, perhaps the best president in American history since the Founding Fathers. Very well put. Thank you, Lior. Uh, when the Fed meets in a, about a week, do you think they'll do a 25 basis point rate cut or do you think they'll, they might do something larger? And how's that gonna play out for precious metals? Um, I, I think that they will do a, a 25 basis points uh, to start. But I do think that they will uh, address the 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 um, the next meeting and and what they project uh, for the future. I think that that is really what the markets uh, don't understand the Fed yet, because in July, in the July meeting, the Fed talked about September being the first rate cut, but the market wanted to understand what. Hold on, you're just gonna cut once and then wait and see. That's not enough for us. And because that wasn't enough for them, uh, you saw what happened with, with one little news nugget from Japan that's, you know, caused the entire Japan Japanese stock market to hold and the NASDAQ to fall like 15%. So the, the markets really wanted more clarity. They got more clarity in the Jackson Hole speech from uh, Powell, which was uh, just three weeks ago, where he said, no, no, no. This is a rate cut policy. We're starting on a rate cut policy. That was better. The market got more clarity. It's not a one-off. It's a policy. It's a, it's a cycle. But the market wants more. It wants to know that the Fed understands the severity of the weak jobs report, uh, of all these recessions and recession indicators that are triggering right now, and that it's not taking them uh, for granted, that, that it's not overlooking them. So I think that that would really be what, what the, the questions and answers period will be on the 18th. They will cut by 25 basis points. There is no need for them to do more. What they do need to clarify is what they think about the jobs market and how aggressive they will be to protect it so we don't fall into a recession. So th that is really what the market wants to know. Now, I think that that plays very well for precious metals. Um, now, I, I've told you that uh, gold will hit an all-time high in 2024. It, it has. It's trading at all-time highs. I think that what was missing for silver are the rate cuts. And now the DXY, which is the dollar index, is trading at 2024 lows. Um, it's right around the 100-point support, which is a big support line for it. If it drops below it, which I think it will once they start cutting, I think that we will enter a dollar bear market. That will take the DXY uh, about 10 to 15 percent lower in the next two years. So I do think that we have we're we're about to enter a very good period uh, for silver. We we might even see silver trading at uh, 50 or above um, before 2027. No kidding, that that's incredible. Um, uh, I mean, in in a dollar bear market, you should expect silver to do very well. And the dollar has been in the bull market since 2008 until 2022 the dxy has gone from the bottom in 2008 which was 75 
uh, points to uh, 120 points in October of 2022 and has since gone down. So we are already in a bear market for the dollar. But uh, as you know, the bear market intensifies uh, towards the, the later stages. I think it will start to intensify as we start to cut rates. Very well put, Lior. Um, what, what's new at Wealth Research Group? Um, with Wealth Research Group, uh, we are diligently covering, uh, obviously, the the, uh, the economy. It's very important to us with what's going on right now. Uh, the elections are going to be a big one in the next uh, uh, two months as we dissect what's happening in the world right now, especially with uh, with Trump, because he, he just does way more um, than uh, Kamala Harris. She, she does no interviews. Um, or, you know, it, it's amazing like to, to see it. Um, and it, it, it's it's so corrupt. Like, it, it, it's, you know. She's just a puppet. I, I don't know how you guys don't wake up from it, like as a country, and say, I, what's going on here? I, how did she even become a candidate? How's that even like allowed? Um, as you know, it was a weekend coup. It was a weekend coup to 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 dethrone uh, Biden. He he won the vote a day before. He said God wouldn't move me from this candidacy. Yeah. So okay, well, I was watching that closely. Okay. I remember. Yes, yes. The, the 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 staff knew about his res resignation from the Twitter. So yep. whoever was in that room. Pelosi, Obama, uh, Chuck Schumer, whoever was in that room and threatened him, uh, it will be nice to know what, what they said. Anyway. They're the deciders. That's that's part of that deep state that we were talking Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay. So, yeah, with Wealth, Wealth Research Group, it's a, it's a free financial newsletter. That's where I share content just like I shared on this interview in written format, five-minute long reads. I also share a lot about my personal portfolio. Um, if you want to check it out, it's at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash portfolio. You can literally download it. Um, so we focus on the three, politic, economic, and uh, financial. Lior, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me.